Hi, and welcome to my molecular biology playlist. Today, we are going to talk about nucleosome remodeling complex. Now, it's a very important topic in molecular biology, and let's see what nucleosome remodeling is all about. We know inside the cell, the nucleus is the hub of all kind of gene expression, transcription, and also our chromatin reside inside the nucleus. So let's dive inside the nucleus to see what happens. Now inside the nucleus, there are genes, but we cannot imagine the genes in an isolated DNA format. We have to understand the gene, the genes are actually in format of a chromatin. Right, so gene is actually a segment of a chromatin. Histones are also there along with the DNA, and they're packed in certain fashion depending upon the time of cell cycle. That is why we cannot imagine a gene which is isolated. Let's imagine a gene which is one kilobase pair long, and at least it would have five nucleosome, right? So the DNA which is encoding that gene would be wrapping around five such nucleosome. And let's say at a particular context, at a particular given point of time, that gene has to be transcribed. And imagine how hard that process would be. First, the transcription initiation site or the promoter site need to be unwrapped and need to be accessible to RNA polymerase and initial uh, transcriptional machinery. And not only that, the RNA polymerase need to travel all along the body of the gene while the histones are bound to it. So it need to be loosened up a little bit such that these movement can happen. And only then the transcription can take place. Not only transcription, imagine th there is a DNA damage. And in order for the damage to be repaired, the repair machinery need to be recruited to the DNA. But the DNA is not isolated, right? DNA is wrapped around these nucleosome cores. That is why it is super difficult for the cell to recruit such machinery and give rise to transcription or uh, repairing the DNA. Now, in order to get rid of this kind of problem, cell has a different machinery which can change the configuration or the architecture of the chromatin in space and time. And these kind of complexes are known as nucleosome remodeling complexes. So the biggest question is how the compaction of the chromatin is loosened up and that give rise to gene expression or many other kind of biological functions. So we know that one possible idea is to modify the histone tails like methylation, acetylation, or phosphorylation, etc. All this kind of modification dictates that how tightly DNA would be wrapped around the histone octamer core. And about that, I have a separate video, which is given at the end of this video. The link is given at the end of this video. Now, there are two ways by which the nucleosome can loosen up and the DNA can be uh, accessible while wrapped around the nucleosome. One is definitely the histone modification. But there are other ways. There are like bromodomain containing proteins, chromodomain containing proteins and complex proteins which recognize these kind of uh, modifications and that is read as a barcode which is further give rise to a change which leads to accessible chromatin. But there are other complexes such as nucleosome rem remodeling complexes which are ATP driven because nucleosome remodeling or chromatin landscape changing it's not an easy jo job so it requires ATP and lot of energy and it is quite uh, expen uh, expensive process in terms of thermodynamics now the nucleosome remodeling complex hydrolyzes ATP to perform this kind of nucleosome reorienting work now we should ask that what kind of changes in terms of chromosome architecture uh, does have is evoked due to the nucleosome remodeling complexes there it turns out that there could be different type of changes and in this video we would look at all of them one by one so one common thing is like all of these nucleosome remodeling complex 
use ATP hydrolysis as a fuel for this kind of dramatic changes. First type of change is sliding of the nucleosome and changing the space between the nucleosome. Let's say the nucleosomes are oriented like this and due to for gene expression you need these nucleosome to be slided around so the nucleosome remodeling complex binds to the particular region and then with the ATP hydrolysis it leads to change in the spacing between the nucleosomes. Now you can understand before and after the nucleosome remodeling complex engagement there is a change of internucleosomal space right and that has a lot of meaning imagine that there is a particular region marked in red here this is the transcription start site and the RNA polymerase need to be bound in that particular region but in a compact situation the RNA polymerase is repelled away because the DNA is so tightly wrapped around the histone it is not accessible anymore but nucleosome remodeling complex let's say slide the histones octamer a little bit and as a result the inaccessible site now become accessible for the RNA polymerase to bind and as a result the transcription can start there are other kind of changes evoked by nucleosome remodeling complexes such as the histones or histone octamer which is wrapped which is wrapped around the DNA can be evicted by the nucleosome remodeling complex. It can totally allow the release of a nucleosome core and thereby free up the DNA for uh, interacting with other DNA binding proteins or repair machineries. This is one kind of mechanism that nucleosome use histone eviction. Now the new sites which are accessible can bind to transcription factor, maybe other modification enzymes or maybe a DNA repair machinery and that lead to transcription and that's how the transcription dynamics is changing inside the cell. Third mechanism involves the replacement of the histone with a different variant of histone. For example the genes which are highly transcribed or the genes which are actively transcribed in those genes uh, the histone H3 is replaced by H3.3 which is a histone variant found in actively transcribed genes and this is done by several kind, different kind of nucleosome remodeling complexes. Now let's say there is a double stranded DNA break and in order to repair this double stranded DNA break the repair machinery need to be recruited but it is hard for the repair machinery to be recruited while it is in a compact form. Now what nucleosome remodeling complex does is make it more accessible and loosen it up such that the repair machinery can be recruited and the double stranded DNA break can be repaired. And one of the common way by which nucleosome remodeling complex does this is by recruiting a histone variant called H2AX and it is recruited when damage sensing kinases phosphorylate <coughs> specific histones and these lead to recruitment of repair machinery and that helps in repairing the damage okay let's talk about the several kind of nucleosome remodeling complexes that work hand in hand inside the cell now first family is SWI SNF and this is pretty much common in yeast, human and drosophila and it is well conserved. And about this particular nucleosome remodeling complex, I have a separate video. Other than these, there are ISW1 complex, there is INO80 complex, there is MI2CHD family complexes. And each of these complexes has some commonality in terms of their functioning, but some unique properties in terms of their functioning as well. So, the biggest common... Uh, commonality about their functioning and in terms of their structure is they all of them have a uh, ATPs domain and all of these need ATP hydrolysis for their functioning. Now let's talk about the diversity of their mechanism of action. If you follow this chart you can understand the number of subunits are very different in terms of these three different family of nucleosome 
remodeling complex. They might have a Bromo domain or Chromo domain, that kind of domain for interacting with the histone modification or might not as well. For example, ISW1 doesn't have any kind of Bromo or Chromo domain. Now, one of the common kind of modeling, uh, remodeling is like nucleosome sliding and it is kind of performed by all these kind of nucleosome remodeling complex. But let's say histone transfer is only performed by SWISNF, not by ISW1. Similarly, the restructuring capability is unique to SWISNF. It is not present in MI2CHD family or ISW1 family. So, though there are commonality in terms of functioning, but there are some unique properties in these kind of nu nucleosome remodeling family, uh, complex families. And about this, I have a detailed video later. Now, several in vitro experiments have suggested that ISW1 remodelers organize nucleosome into proper bundle format and they make sure that the spacing between the nucleosomes are equal and they maintain the symmetry. Whereas, I, whereas swi sniff complexes actually disorder nucleosome and both, the kind, both kind of outcome has important uh, implications on gene expression and transcription profile. Now, the ISW1 family remodelers can be very important in terms of maintenance of higher order chromatin structure. And it turns out it maintains the compact chromatin state after the replication is done. Similarly, there are other nucleosome remodeling complex which instead of uh, uh, helping gene expression might repress the gene expression and might lead to transcriptional repression such as NERD complex, which is a MI2CHD family remodeling complex, and it leads to repression, and it is super important in terms of stem cell uh, maintenance, uh, I mean maintenance of the stem cell's pluripotent state. That is why we can understand, depending upon the context, depending upon which interactors it is interacting to, nucleosome remodeling complex can remodel the chromatin landscape in different ways. And each of these different type of modification have different physiological implications that would that is super important in context of development and diseases. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was an introductory video about nucleosome remodeling complex. In other videos, we would look in details of these subfamilies and their mode of action and all the nuts and bolts of that. So if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.